In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the signup form completely from scratch. Let's get started. So to get started, I'm opening up a CodePen project. Right now in the HTML, I just have a head tag with a link to the font family I'm going to use for this project. And then beneath that, I have body tags, which are empty. So to get started, I'm going to go inside of the body tags of the HTML. And to start off, I'm going to create a form and I'm going to give it a class of form. I'm going to place all of the content within this form element. And so first I'm going to include an H1 tag with a class of form title to be the title for the form. Next, I'm going to include a description for the form. So I'm going to include a paragraph tag with a class of form description. I'm following the BEM model for the naming convention here. That's why I have the class form here and then I have form underscore underscore title here. So that's the way I'm going to organize my classes. Beneath these two elements, I'm actually going to begin the form design. So each form element will include an input and a label, and I want them to behave in the same manner. So beneath this, I'm going to start by creating a div with a class of form group. And so that form group will hold the input and the label. So then within that group, I'm going to contain those two elements. So first I'm going to include an input and this input will have an ID of email because it will be the email field. I'm going to give it a class of form input because that is how we're going to apply styling to it within the CSS. I'm going to give it a placeholder of an empty string and I'm going to set the autocomplete to off. So we can actually see that first input field in the document. And then beneath that, I'm going to create the label for that input. So I'm going to create a label. It will be for that email field. I'm going to give it a class of form label. And I actually want this label to be visible on the page. So I'm going to give it the content of email. So now we have an input and we have a label. And so I want the password field to behave in the same way. So I'm going to copy and paste this group, but change its content to be appropriate for a password. So for the input type of text, instead I'm going to change this to password. I'm going to modify the ID as well as the label. And I actually don't need to set the autocomplete to off here, so I'm going to delete that. So beneath these two form groups, I'm actually going to want to add a button to the page. So here I'm going to add a button with a class of form button. And I'm going to add text to this button of sign up. So this is the entire structure for the HTML. And the last thing I'm going to do is actually add content for the H1 tag and for that description tag. So here I'm just going to add sign up as the H1. And then I'm also going to add a description to the paragraph tag. So now that we have all of the HTML written for this project, we can jump inside of the CSS to start applying styling. Now within the CSS, I added SCSS as a preprocessor, which allows me to nest CSS elements and also declare variables. So you can add SCSS to your CodePen project by clicking on this little gear icon. And then under CSS preprocessor, you can select it. There are various other kinds of preprocessors that you can add, but I like SCSS. So that's what I'm using for this project. So first I like to declare variables for the project. So that way I have all of my colors defined at the beginning of the project. So I'm just going to add some color variables first. And then beneath that, I always like to add some basic styling, like setting the box sizing set to border box and a margin and padding set to zero. So then I'm going to add that. So now with all of my setup defined, I can actually start applying styling to the project. So first I'm going to add styles for the body. So I'm going to reference the body tag. And first I'm just going to set the font family and the font weight for the project. And then I want to add a really cool linear gradient to the background. So I'm just going to add a linear gradient here. And then I'm also going to set the height of it to 100% of the viewport height. And I'm going to set the display of this to grid. Now, if you're brand new to grid, I have an entire crash course video that goes over all of the basics. So if you're interested in watching that video, I'll link it in the description below. And so with that display set to grid, I'm going to justify the content and align the items in the center. And then I'm going to set the text color for the project to a particular variable that I already declared. 
So that's all of the basic body styling. And then beneath that, I can apply styling to the actual form. Now remember, in the HTML, I have this form, which holds all of these elements on the page. And so within that form, I have a title, a description, two form groups, and a submit button. So to begin, I'm going to add some basic styling to the form and then to each of the elements. So for this form, I'm going to set the width of it to 24 REM, and I'm going to set some padding to 2 REM. I'm also going to add a border radius of a variable that I already declared, and I'm going to set the background color to white. Next, I'm going to apply styling for the title. So again, in my HTML, I added form underscore underscore and then title. So within my SCSS, I can just write and underscore underscore title to reference this element. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So for this title, I'm just going to add a margin bottom of 0.5 REM. Then I'm going to follow a very similar procedure for the description. So here I'm going to write and description. And I'm also going to add a margin bottom here. So that adds some breathing room to the page. The next thing I'm going to do is work on each form group. So here I'm going to write and group. And I'm going to set the position of this element to relative. And it's because I'm going to set the position of the label to absolute later on, and it needs something to grab onto. So that's why I'm setting the position relative here. I'm also going to define the height of this element as three REM, and I'm going to add a margin bottom. Next, I'm going to work on the input. So here I'm going to write and input. And for this element, I'm going to define the height and width to 100% of the parent element. I'm going to add a two pixel border and also a border radius. Now, if I were to type inside of this input field, we can see that it doesn't have the same text style applied to it as the rest of the page. So here I'm going to set the font family and the font weight to inherit. I'm also going to set the color to inherit, the outline to none, and I'm also going to add a specific padding. I'm also going to set the background to none. So now if I were to type inside of this input field, we can actually see that correct font family applied to the project. Next, I'm going to work on some hover and focus states. So beneath this, I'm going to write and hover, and I'm going to add a border color. And I'm going to do a very similar thing for the focus state as well. So now if I were to hover on this input field, we can see that the border changes color. And if I were to tap inside of it, it changes to a different color as well. Next, I'm going to apply style for the actual label. So for this label, I want full control over its position on the page. So here I'm going to set the position of it to absolute. I'm going to define the left and top placement. I'm going to add some padding of zero and then 0 0.5 REM. I'm going to define the background color as white. And then I know I'm going to want this to animate upwards in the design. So I'm going to apply a transition here for the top, left, and font size. And for each of these values, I'm going to set it to 200 milliseconds with an ease in. So we will define this transition later on. Beneath this, I'm going to apply styling for the button. So I'm going to set the display of it to block and I'm going to set a margin left to auto, so that way it's pushed to the right side of the page. I'm going to add some padding, and I'm going to add a background color. This also doesn't have the correct font applied to it, so I'm going to set the font family and font weight to inherit. I'm going to add a border radius, and then I'm going to set the outline to none, the border to none, and then the cursor to pointer. And I also want this element to have a transition effect as well. I want to modify the background color. So here I'm going to set the transition to the background color in 200 milliseconds with an ease in. And then beneath this, I'm going to add a hover state for the background color, and I'm going to set it to a different color. So now if I hover over it, there's a transition effect from the primary to the primary dark color. Cool, so this is looking really good so far. So the last thing I want to do is apply transition effects for this label. So if I were to tap inside of this input field and start typing, this label stays in its position, and therefore it doesn't have the desired behavior that I would like it to. So I'm going to add a transition effect for this label. 
So beneath this, I'm going to reference the form input. And when that form input is in the focus state, I want it to transform a sibling element. And that sibling I want to change is the form label. So this is saying that when that input is in the focus state, I'm going to change the label. So when the user taps inside of this input field, I want this label to move upward and I want it to reduce its font size. So here I'm going to modify the top, left, and the font size values. So now I'm expecting that when I tap on this input field, I will see this label transition. So I click into it and we can see that it actually moves upwards. Great, so now I'm actually going to type in content in this input field. And when I click away from it, it returns back to its original state. And that's because we don't have focus on this element anymore. But if there's actually content within here, I actually don't want the form label to go back to its original position. I want it to stay like this. So I have to add another state to the CSS. So I'm going to add a comma, and I'm going to say that when that form input is not showing the placeholder, which means that there's actually some content within it, and the form input is not in the focus state anymore, I still want that form label to be in this state. So if this is a brand new concept to you, I have an entire video dedicated to this specific topic. So I'll link that video in the description below. So what this is basically saying is that when that form input is not showing the placeholder, meaning that someone typed in content here and the element is no longer in the focus state, I still want that form label to have these properties. So I have content in the email field if I tap away, it still retains that label positioning. Same with the password field. So if I were to go inside the password field, I'm going to write some text and I'm going to click away, it still retains that label positioning. So there you go. That's how I created the signup form completely from scratch. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.